investors make a deliberate decision not to spend money today and invest from the future because we want to achieve a future financial goal. It can be for retirement, outgrowing inflation, charitable donations, or financial legacy for family members. Not investing or not doing it properly can mean longer working life, unable to pursue career choices, or unable to meet lifestyle needs at retirement. Therefore, it's of crucial importance to be informed and avoid some common mistakes people make in investing. Peter Mollick, founder of Creative Planning, talks about some of these mistakes in his book, The Five Mistakes Every Investor Make and How to Avoid Them. To put it in perspective, Peter and his firm, Creative Planning, managed over $40 billion in assets as of April 2019 and has been ranked as a number one independent wealth management firm in America multiple times in recent years. I hope some of his insights in the book will be of value to our listeners. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and click the like button below. Mistake number one, market timing. Most retail investors engage in some form of market timing, such as waiting for market correction to invest spare cash, waiting for election year, or avoid debt crisis. It's the idea that there are times to be in the market and other times to be out of the market. An example would be selling all equities now due to an invisible enemy and market volatility, then anticipate to jump back in when market bottoms. While I understand the logic and motivation, empirical data and market research conclusively demonstrate that market timing does not work for most investors. Bauer and Dahlquist examined over 1 million market timing sequences from 1926 to 1999 and concluded that holding the market outperformed over 80% of the market timing strategies. Looking back in 2001 bear market and 2008 financial crisis, retail investors saw record amount of stocks to move to cash and the bottom, in both cases, then jump back in after stocks fully recovered. To quote the author, investor had mistimed the market perfectly, breaking records both ways, both times, and exactly in the wrong time. Still, many investors often feel confident about their investment decisions because they have access to various sources of information. Some examples would be financial media, reputable economists, prominent financial advisors, or star fund managers, newsletters, your buddy, various fancy investment strategies such as asset class rotation, downside protection, tactical allocation, style rotation, sector rotation. So let's dive into a couple of these sources and for the rest you can read up in more details if you are interested. Anyone listening to CNBC or media alike will realize how predictions by market experts change drastically daily and are often wrong. One day some experts will say death of equities, the other day someone else will scream massive buying opportunity. The author asserts that media's job is not to inform you, but instead to gain eyeballs, which lead to higher advertising revenue. Therefore, it is important to note that the total value of all information regarding market costs by media experts is zero. Ignore all these noises. But you're better than that. You listen to reputable economists, not financial pundits. The reality is that they are no better than anyone else in making market predictions. Mr. Fisher, whom Milton Friedman declared as the greatest economist, asserted that stock prices had reached permanently high plateau on October 15, 1929. Well, we all know how things all collapsed in the Great Depression just one week after that assertion. Similarly, Ben Bernanke stated January 2008 that Federal Reserve was not forecasting a recession. How many times the economy slide into the worst recession since the Great Depression? Still, you may wonder about those economists that successfully predicted major economic crisis. One of the most celebrated economic forecasters is Dr. Rubini. In 2006, he warned about the US housing crisis in an IMF paper which turned out to be true in 2007 and 2009, leading to one of the worst financial recessions in recent history. According to the IMF transcript, Dr. Doom predicted a 70% recession in the US based on the smell test and inflated his hunch to appear more confident. Furthermore, 
if you realize that Dr. Doom made the same predictions in year 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. Joe Stiglitz, a Nobel Prize winning economist, said that economists only successfully predict about 3 or 4 times out of 10. Without your odds, I'll go with my coin toss next time. If that's still not enough to convince you not to time the market, just remember what John Bogle had to say. In 55 years in the business, I not only have never met anybody that knew how to do it, I have never met anybody who had met anybody that knew how to do it. Mistake number two, active trading. For every trade to happen, there's a buyer and a seller with no value created in the process. Therefore, for every trade you make profits, there must be another trader that lost money. In the world of stocks, there's a third player in the process, the broker. The broker acts as a house in the casino and gets paid via fees no matter you win or lose. To make it worse, those with profitable trades end up paying taxes on their profits. These two costs alone already push majority of active traders into net loss positions. You may wonder about traders who win enough to cover the trading cost and taxes. However, there's no evidence suggesting successful active traders stay winners over a long period of time. Most of the outperformance can be attributed to luck or take on excessive risk, which can lead to a devastating performance in the future. In the world of active mutual funds or hedge funds, the trading cost is embedded in higher MER associated with the funds. Academic studies show that 82% of the active mutual funds underperform their respective benchmark over a 15 year period. Hedge funds did not perform any better, such that only 37% survived. In 2008, Warren Buffett made a 10 year bet with Tessides on whether hedge funds could beat the market. Of course, we now know that Buffett won the bet and the SP500 significantly outperformed the top hedge funds selected by Sides. In fact, simply investing a 60-40 portfolio would have outperformed hedge funds with less volatility in most years. Big name investment managers, venture capital, and endowments are not accessible to most retail investors. However, there's no reason to worry about that since the story is the same. They all underperform the market with higher fees and taxes over the long term. Research clearly demonstrated that funds with most activity underperform funds with the least activity over 3, 5, and 10 year periods. In other words, the more you trade, the more you underperform. Mistake number 3. Misunderstanding performance and financial information. Judge performance with proper reference. Imagine there are 100,000 people in a room and you ask them to flip coins. After first flip, you would expect 50,000 people to flip heads. Then you ask those 50,000 people to flip again. 25,000 will flip heads. You repeat this 10 times, you have almost 100 people flip heads every time for 10 times straight. Do you attribute these 100 people's ability to flip heads to skills or to sheer luck? So next time when someone shows you a fund that has done well in the last 10 years, do not forget to check out the fund managers and all the funds they have managed over the years. The reality is that any outperformance over a period of time by any manager is likely due to luck once you factor in number of funds and managing the market. Such luck will have no bearing on the expected future performance. Believe that financial media are helpful? Well, they are not. They are businesses that need to make profits. Best way for them to do it is to over-dramatize any events to catch as many viewers as possible. To put it in perspective, that moving 100 points up or down is only a fraction of a percentage. Such movement does not need any explanation at all. Belief that market cares about past. Do not forget that past performance is not a reliable indicator for future performance. The only thing market truly cares about is the anticipated future earnings. If the business does well with higher anticipated future earnings, the stock price will rise to reflect such expectations. All time high means the market is due for a pullback. The most striking fact is that market hits all time highs all the time more often than once a month on average. 
while inflation contributes to the higher prices. Majority of the gains are due to businesses doing better and making more money over time. Correlation means causation. There's an indicator called the Super Bowl indicator with 80% accuracy, suggesting that market tends to do well when the NEF wins. It is important to realize that many correlations happen because of chance. Overestimating the impact of a manager. Asset class selection is responsible for 88% of investors' return. Therefore, a great return is indicative of the performance of a given class rather than skills of any particular manager. Market drops on the time to get defensive. You should stick to your strategy and maintain the same asset allocation by rebalancing. Stay the course. Mistake number four, let yourself get in the way. Humans possess too many behavioral and emotional attributes that can lead to financial ruin. Some common attributes are fear, greed, and hurting. These instincts are extremely costly and cause irreparable damage to investors. An insight from one of the most powerful persons during his tenure, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, is that almost everything in the market is noise. Control your fear, control your greed, avoid the herd, and you will come out financially successful. Confirmation bias. It's a tendency for people to look for and favor information that confirms their preconceptions and beliefs. At the same time, avoid, devalue, or dismiss information that conflicts with their beliefs. For example, Trump supporters were more likely to turn to Fox News for Trump-related information. At the same time, they will discredit CNN's coverage of Trump news. Similar behavior permeates throughout an investor's decision. Research clearly shows that once an investor likes or on the stock, he or she will actively seek out information that validates the decision to buy in the stock or reasons to keep holding it. Overconfidence effects. Studies show that 93% of student drivers think their driving was above average. 94% of professors think they are above average. When analysts are 80% certain a stock will go up, they were right only 40% of the time. 74% of fund managers surveyed said they had delivered about average job performance. Well, that's not how average works. In fact, studies show that overconfidence leads to more trading, reduced returns with higher fees and taxes. Other notable negative traits include anchoring, loss aversion, mental accounting, recency bias, negative bias, gambling. Remember, both amateurs and professionals fall prey to the same set of behavioral biases we just talked about. Therefore, the most important quality for investor is temperament, not intellect. Mistake number five, working with the wrong advisor. Many investors choose to work with financial advisors for many reasons. Having the right financial advisor can greatly increase the odds of achieving your financial goals. However, most advisors do far more harm than good. Therefore, it's prudent to go through a checklist before deciding whether you want to work with a given advisor. Number one, custody of the money. Make sure a third party has custody of your money at all times, not an advisor. One recent high profile Ponzi scheme was the Bernie Madoff scandal, where he had the custody of the client's money. Make sure you do not work with any advisor who insists on custody of your money. Two, Conflict of interest. It's important to identify advisors with fiduciary standards who will act on your best interest at all times. Some key questions that help you make the selection of advisors are A. Are you a broker or investment advisor? Investment advisor registered with SEC is obligated to disclose conflicts and put your interest first. B. Are advisors duly registered? These registers are ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing and can switch between fiduciary standards and non fiduciary standards. Avoid them, period. C. Are the advisors offering you any proprietary funds? These advisors tend to sell your funds owned by an affiliated company. 
avoid these advisors because they are just salespeople in disguise. 3. Competence Does your advisor possess professional designations that meet your needs? For example, Certified Financial Planner or CPA. Make sure you choose an advisor who works primarily with clients at your stage of life. You want them to say, been there, done that. Make sure your advisor's investment philosophy aligns with your personal philosophy. Now, if your advisor meets above criteria and avoid market timing and active strategies, then congratulations. You've got yourself a partner who will increase the odds of you attaining your financial goal and offering ongoing advices for your family to make better financial decisions.